There is climate change, of course, but we, we can make it worse. And the same is true for aging. We all age naturally, but we also can accelerate and decelerate the rate of, that we age now. But that's very clear from a lot of different studies by how we live our life and increasingly how uh, doctors treat us. The important thing about all of this uh, is that just because something's natural doesn't mean it's acceptable. That's not an argument. It never has been. What about your surroundings? Any of you watching or listening is natural. I don't see anything in this room. Maybe the wood table was once natural, but everything else is artificial. We've made a world for ourselves and we cannot exist in the wild. And we don't accept the way the world treats us naturally. We, we heat our houses, we cure diseases. Aging is just the same. There is no shame in trying to make people healthier for longer. In fact, it's what we do in medicine. That is the goal. So I'm, I'm at a loss why there's such resistance to really what doctors are aiming to do, which is to keep their patients healthier for longer. It's just that we're tackling what we believe to be the root cause of most of those problems that happen in old age. Alzheimer's, for instance, in my lab, we've got research that says that 80 to 90% of that disease is aging itself. And when we reverse the age of an animal's brain, memory comes back. So we're tackling disease at the end of life and putting band-aids on something and forgetting about what's largely driving that process. I like to use the analogy of obesity. Okay, the, there was a major change um, around a decade ago, as I recall, where obesity was declared by the FDA as a disease, or at least a treatable medical condition. But this was a major change. It was something that now uh, could be treatable. Um, and now if you fast forward to today, what we have are really great and increasingly um, effective and safe treatments for obesity and also type 2 diabetes, which of course goes hand in hand with obesity. And I think that's largely driven by obesity being a treatable medical condition. The same would happen to, for aging. This is why we want it to change. It's, you know, we don't care about the words, we care about the practical implications of defining something as treatable. Okay, and the same thing would happen is that there would be more investment and more inclination of even insurance companies to look into aging as something that is preventable. And that will actually save billions of dollars. Uh, my colleagues and I have published that just saving one year of human life in a healthy way, extending life in the US could save $86 trillion in the long run just in the US. So it's these words mean things. They make a big difference to the, the future of the planet. And I don't think these decisions about codes should be based on psychology and people who get offended. Yeah, you know, it's a word, get over it. I think it's more important that we develop medicines to treat not just that generation, but future generations, people who are now in their 20s and 30s could easily miss out on medicines that will never be made because of this change. And I think if we frame the question differently, instead of saying, how many of you would like to live to 120? A lot of people are nervous about that because they, they picture being old and frail. Um, instead, if you ask the question, how many of you would like to have an extra two years with your parents in a healthy state or not suffer in the last five years of life and be vibrant and productive and look after your, grand look after your grandkids? That's very different. I think most people would say, yeah, give me that. And it's the same questions, just asked differently. And, uh, and really what we're talking about here is finding a practical way to help more people. We don't have a big disagreement across the planet about what the final goal is. Um, I thought we should also mention for those who are not in the field that the science has come to a point where we do understand many of the underlying causes of aging. And we even have ways to measure it um, very accurately, surprisingly accurately. And there are a number of what we call biological clocks. These clocks could one day be very useful measures that doctors could use to look at the future trajectory and health of their patients to act well before any symptoms arise. And that's the bright future that I hope that we as a group can inspire others to join in on the cause and get to that future that I think should be here as soon as possible.